Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. So in today's episode, Tara and I are talking about why it's good to experiment with your art techniques and also ways to help you break out of your comfort zone. But before we go any further, we just want to say a big thank you for some new reviews we've noticed pop up on iTunes. So the most recent ones are from Bit Lumpy, and I'm really sorry, I, I don't know your real name. I presume that's like um well, a social tag or something, but he, you. <laughs> he or she says, incredibly useful, inspiring podcast. Just started listening and finding the ideas really inspiring and motivational. Loving this find. So that's really lovely, lovely to hear, isn't it? And um, we have I'm Insane, who, of course, is Deb Sane from our group. And she says, facing your art fears. Some of my favourite episodes are ones exactly like this. Just you two chatting about this and that, creating, of course, but also bras and panties being strapped <laughs> being strapped to a chair, olives, words like gouache and juxtaposition, saying cupboard instead of closet, fizzy drink instead of soda or pop, pronouncing ecology with a long E. I love humour and people who have a sense of humour, and you two just always manage to make me laugh and enlighten and inform me about all kinds of things creative. I also love the fact that you are both stellar artists who don't take themselves too seriously. Thank you both from the bottom of my heart. You don't know how much you and this podcast and the Facebook group mean to me and how you sometimes serve as a life preserver. And yes, still manic. I'll tell you what, anyone new to this podcast who listened to that will be wondering what kind of podcast this is and where bras and panties come in. (laughs) (laughs) But I was really touched, Deb, for you writing that review. Thank you. Yes, so nice. So we've also got a few more. We had one from Glenn478, and this was about episode 29, which, to be honest, I can't remember which one it was. (laughs) But he says, you two have great chemistry together. Oh, yeah. How nice. (laughs) He doesn't hear us when we're squabbling off, off air. No. <laughs> um, then we've got K80 Fab, and he or she says, Love this podcast. Funny, practical, down to earth, and encouraging. I love listening to this podcast. I am also engaged with the Kick and the Creative community on Facebook and Instagram. So they become like friends. I'm slowly working my creative life into engaging more and more with the challenges they present each month. They really have had an impact on my growth as an artist. I'm now wondering who that is, because that's obviously someone in our group, but they've obviously got a different name in our group. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. But thank you anyway. Yeah, honestly, you've got no idea how much your reviews mean to us, and it just makes all of the work that goes on behind the scenes so worthwhile. And there is a lot, isn't there, Tara? (laughs) Yeah, there is. But as always, we also want to thank everyone who's been sharing their work with us on social media. So we're actually recording this on the 6th of June, so it's very early on in the month, but already there are lots of things that have caught my eye. So... um, we have Paula Jeffrey, and she's been doing some really great cartoons for Cartoon in June. And I've also been loving Bradley Bergen's cartoons as well. Um, we've got Jan Byers, and she's been doing some really lovely drawings for Copyist June. And so has Art by Jackie P. But to be honest, I could list loads already. I really could, but we'd be here all day. So what about you, Tara? What's caught your eye? Well, Catherine Slater has been doing some really lovely copyist work. Mm. Uh, there was one by Toulouse the Trek she did. I thought it looked fantastic. And then we've got Claire Dunphy, and she's been doing some urban sketch sort of style drawings. And she'd done one of the Riverside Festival in Leicester. I thought that was brilliant. And I also wanted to give a mention to John Munro. Who, it's not actually uh, one of the challenges he's taking part in, but he recently got invited to the BBC Writers' Room. So I just want to say congratulations to him. Yay. That's a brilliant uh, achievement. That's amazing. That's amazing. John, remember who we are when you're famous. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget us. You can be our sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> so what's new, Sandra? What's been happening? Well, of course, we met again in London a few days ago, didn't we? We did. We did. Yeah, and we, which was very good. Yeah, we had a really productive day. And it's such 
good fun, isn't it? Going out and sketching with someone else. And it was funny because we just before we came on to air, we were talking, weren't we, about, you know, we we can go out with our other halves and do a bit of sketching, but it, you always feel wary and conscious that you're, you know, they might be bored or you're spending too much time you know focusing on something else rather than their company so of course when we meet it's kind of like right we've got all day and we both want to do the same thing so it's great if you can ever find someone to do that with it's such a a great fun day isn't it so yeah I actually think that'd be quite a good episode you know you mentioned before that maybe in the future we could do an episode about you know setting up an art group because I've been trying to do that as well yeah maybe that'd be a good one or maybe an art group is could for some people feel a bit intimidating but just finding an art buddy (laughs) just someone to go out sketch it with somebody with a similar interest it's like you know quite like to go out I don't know we I mean we've we've had a couple of really good days sketching um haven't we and we, we're going to arrange another one for August I think August or September but um, we're doing it one in July oh yes July oh gosh we've got another <laughs> we've one coming up in, already. Yeah, we've got another one coming up in July yeah and um then we've got another one coming up in September honestly can't get enough of each other can we yeah. Tara <laughs> uh, well speak for yourself <laughs> so we we started um we started off in Trafalgar Square didn't we and um, that was great because we kind of tucked our way ourselves away on some steps. But luckily, you had a, a lovely cushion with you, didn't you, Tara? Which you <laughs> lovely bit of kitchen roll. A bit of kitchen roll to sit on. <laughs> I, we both had it. Because I hadn't thought about that. Because obviously, sometimes in London, you can't find a place to sit necessarily. So you have to perch your bum on a on a step somewhere. But a dirty step. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we we sketched um, some people in Trafalgar Square and that's great because really every angle you look there's something else isn't there to look at and other people and it's really good and there's lots of people just sitting around so it's an ideal place I think to sketch people um then we found a place to sketch along the south bank and that was really nice so we wandered along the Thames and we sat opposite um big ben who unfortunately was covered in scaffolding so we couldn't even f- see the clock face could we but such um, a shame wasn't it yeah it was but you know we still had the you know the thames and the bridges and i had my mind set on um one of the old fashioned sort of london's uh lamp posts which i sketched with a bit of the um kind of an indication of what was going on in the background which is one you like the best isn't it of mine um then what did you what did you do there? You did the actual building, didn't you? You do try to watercolour there. Yeah, I had a bit of a disaster trying to do that building because um I got the scale a bit wrong. So I added two attempts at that and I really wanted to do watercolours, but it was one of those buildings that has loads of windows, which I think I've mentioned before. I don't like windows very much. <laughs> Lots of windows. So yeah, that was trouble. Uh, trouble with that one. And we also had a nice ice cream as well. We didn't did. We, we did. I, I'm more greedy than you, though. I had a double yeah. ice cream with a flake. <laughs> then after that, and if anyone goes to London and you want to draw buildings, we have to tell you about level six in the Tate Modern. Actually, if. It's funny because we didn't actually do a lot of sketching there, did we? Because we'd been along the South Bank, which is a view of all the buildings across, you know, you know, opposite. The so, Thames yeah, and stuff, exactly. Yeah. But when you go to level six at the Tate Modern, there's a there's a cafe, and it's got basically one whole wall is practically like a postcard view, isn't it? It's just one long glass wall, and you just see the London skyline, don't you? And it's an amazing view. It really is. It's fantastic. Um, but I hate drawing buildings. <laughs> So it wasn't so much geared towards me, but you wanted to draw buildings, didn't you? So I thought, oh, that'd be a great place to go. So we went there. Um, and then we finished up in Covent Garden, didn't we? Where we treated ourselves to a couple of drinkies. And um, I think we both sort of sketched the people around us, didn't we? But God, that was so busy, wasn't it? Oh, it was heaving, It was, yeah. and it was... But I actually really enjoyed it. We had a really nice spot there, didn't we? We had a great spot there, Just... really good, and... It was so sunny. We both <laughs> felt so hot all day. And it was a nice breeze there, wasn't wasn't it? And uh, had a couple of drinks, finished with our final sketch, and then we just kind of relaxed for the next sort of hour, didn't we? And, yeah, just... And made made our way back, didn't we? Yeah. Do, do you know what I, I thought as well? Because I, I really thought I wanted to draw buildings, but I definitely prefer people. Yeah, me and too. And you, you were actually really... It was really different 
sketching with you this time, which kind of goes into what we're going to talk about in a bit, because you were much more experimental. I don't know if you're going to talk more about that later. Yeah. But, but you really experimented with your sketches this time, whereas last time you were doing more, I'd say, drawing, weren't you? Much Yes. Um, more detailed yeah I mean last time I literally took a, my biro and a sketchbook and I was yeah I think you're right I was drawing rather than sketching and this time I took my um, Lamy Safari pen and um, a brush with some water I also took some coloured pens as well didn't really use those but um, I thought I'm going to try this technique and just try my sort of loose scribbly technique and just draw a bit of in ink into it with my brush. It's really effective, actually. And I'll tell you what, what I was doing last time, I was, do you know, taking 20 minutes to draw a person. This time I drew an entire bench with about nine people sitting along it in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Not even that, probably. And um, I, I found, yeah, I think I found a style I'm really liking, I'm really enjoying. I mean, I really liked your ones last time as well they were they were great drawings it's just um not so great when people are moving is it that no sort of thing? no they're more exactly that if i'd have tried this technique you remember last time we went to the ice rink and we were trying to, <laughs> yeah, trying to sketch nightmare, people wasn't it? yeah and that was i think this technique i was using this time would be really good for that because you're just indicating yeah. and i will post them on the group i haven't got round to it yet but i'll post some of the sketches we did on i you know I, you've already posted yours haven't you but i'll I'll post some of mine on the group but um yeah i really enjoyed it and i and now i've started sketching like that going back to the drawing i think i suppose it feels quite labored to do that when you're out and about this was much more fun i sat down and i wasn't worried about oh god you know tara's waiting for me I wasn't really worried about that in the first place, to be honest. <laughs> you worried but about that last time. Not really, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. This time, I, I just did three drawings when you did one. That's yeah. All the last time. Whereas this time, we were pretty much on the same pace, really, weren't we? Yeah. Which was really good. But yeah, London's a fantastic place to go, isn't it, for, for sketching? It's exhausting. Yeah, it is, because of all the walking around we did. Yeah. yeah. But what I found weird is that. Um, we started off in Trafalgar Square, like you said before, and I started off, my first drawing was terrible. We kept on calling, oh, that's a warm-up, didn't we? <laughs> we do a bad one. <laughs> that's a warm-up, that's a warm-up. Warm warm um, but then I did um, that, you know, the guy who was kind of slumped, sort yes. of half asleep. We both drew him, didn't we? Yeah. And um, I didn't like him when I first drew him. I thought, oh, I don't like that much. And then I think I drew something else on the page and then... I turn the next page, do something else, and then you look back and think, oh, do you know, actually, he's all right. Yeah. And I think that's so strange how your opinion changes because your opinion changed overnight, didn't it, as well, when you looked at yours the next day? Yeah, I mean, I was looking back at mine thinking, oh, yeah, I like that bit. I'm not so keen on that bit. I don't mind that bit. Mm, you know, I don't like that one. That one's awful. The next day I woke up and I looked through them and thought, oh, yeah, no, they're fine, you know. Yeah, this one, see it as a whole then, don't yeah, you? Yeah, wasn't. There was. It was more about the experience, I think. And you look back and think, yeah, yeah, I remember sitting there, and yeah, no, I, I really, um, you do change your opinion when you step back and you just see it for what it is. It's a sketch. It's an indication of the day, and and um, yeah, I mean, when I, because obviously I took the same sketchbook as I'd taken to London, didn't I? Before. Yeah. And it was funny because when we were looking back, it was like two different artists had drawn in the same book. <laughs> Yeah, very strange. Mm. And, and I, I know I took this time a really thin, like, sketchbook I got for a pound. You did, yeah. Um, and I also took that watercolour one, you know, that lovely one with the pink colour. Be honest. Pink cover. Be honest, Tara, you took four sketchbooks, didn't you? No, I took two. I thought you took four. I took two. Oh, two. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I take that back. pink one. I take that back. Well, I took the four that we get, we left that we can oh, talk yeah, about in a yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it, yeah. But I didn't draw it. They weren't for drawing it. No. But the, I actually found that I drew much more in the cheap pound one because, again, of that less preciousness thing. And I'm thinking in future I might do that. I might take, you know, again, a watercolour one just in case I want a watercolour. But those little ones are absolutely fine for, like, pen and wash. They work brilliantly. And I think, in a way, it's nice because you could almost fill one of those up on a trip because they're quite thin as well. well what I noticed about the ones you were using, considering they're a pound, is I didn't notice the um, paper buckling either. No, and they didn't go through either. They didn't really no. have much show through, no. which was pretty good. Yeah. 
Which, shall we now talk about the project, the Rediscover Your Art project? Which is why you thought I had loads of sketchbooks with me. Well, I was going to say what's new with you, but yeah, okay, go on. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I've, I've got the same new as you. Yeah, that's true. I've been to London. That's true. <laughs> okay, move on then. <laughs> okay, so, well, basically the four notebooks you were talking about, we've, we've had an idea for a new project, which we're calling Rediscover Your Art. And the basic premise of the whole thing is to encourage people to be more creative and rediscover their love of drawing or writing that they had when they were young. So as well as being being fun, art can also be incredibly therapeutic. So we thought this would be a nice little project. So the idea is, and we hope everybody gets involved in this, that you buy or make a cheap A5 or similar size, fairly small sketchbook. A bit like your one from the works, which was a pound. This one wasn't from the works this time. This was Hobbycraft. Oh, okay. Really thin but one yeah, just a pound, but, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you create your own front colour, so you cover. So you can design that. You can make it with collage or paint or biro, or you can make it digitally, however you like. And then on the front cover, you include the hashtag, rediscover your art, and then the at sign kicking the creatives. And then you also put your own name or your social tag, whatever you use on Instagram and Facebook. And then you either, oh, actually, we've got a template as well to put inside just so it tells the person that you're going to leave this for, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I'm not doing this very well, am I? (laughs) So what you then do is when your sketchbook's all ready, you either give it to someone that you know that you think would really like to start drawing or creating again, or you leave it somewhere where somebody else can find it. And hopefully they pick it up and they start creating with it. So while we were in London, we took down four sketchbooks, didn't we? Yeah. Um, we did those digitally, so we printed out some covers that we created that had all our sort of pink graphics that we do for kicking the creatives. We put printed those out, and then because I was very embarrassed about doing it, you, you were hiding them places, weren't you? Yeah, and it's, it's I think it's important to kind of think about where you're going to leave them, so places where creative people might hang out, maybe. Yeah, you know, we left one, didn't we, in the um, Tate modern level six cafe along that postcard window because that's a place where a lot of people might draw (laughs) yeah definitely. we also left one outside a pub at a table because usually you feel more creative when you've had a few (laughs) um where else did we leave one we we left one at the end we left two actually uh, on the table of the cafe at the end where we were Oh, Covent Gardens, Did, yeah. Yeah, when we were having a no, beer and cider. No, because well, I took one home, didn't I? Because I said, oh, I'll, oh, yeah, we left oh, one yes. there. Yeah. We left one there, and then I was meant to leave one on the train. But I found forgot, it in my bag you? the next day. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no, I forgot. But it was funny, yesterday, Adele, my daughter, who is pregnant, um, she asked me to go with, with her to her scan, um, which was in the hospital, and I left it on a chair in the maternity unit. <laughs> Oh, great idea. Because I thought pregnant ladies, you know, when yeah. you're um, at the final sort of few weeks, you can't, it's hard, you don't tend to work then because you're preparing and all the rest of it. So that's when you might have a bit of time to get a bit creative. So I thought that'd be an ideal place to leave, actually. So that's what I did. Yeah, or I guess the guys or, or women who are waiting yeah, for their partners. Exactly. If they're bored waiting, if they have to wait a while, yeah. they can do a bit of drawing. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, if you want to find out more about this project, you can go to our website, kickinthecreatives.com forward slash rediscover your art. And all the details are there, what you need to do. Yeah. And, and let us know if you find one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure you tell us. Anyway, we'll get on to today's episode, shall we? Yeah. So cool. we're talking about the importance of experimenting with your art and daring to break out of your comfort zone. But you might be asking yourself, why that's even important at all i mean if you're happy with how you paint or draw what's the point in mixing things up and i used to ask myself the exact same question so i'm going to fess up from the outset to anyone listening who isn't yet familiar with myself and tara so tara you're the one aren't you you bore easily um, and you experiment with just about every technique style and medium known to man whereas I've always been more reluctant to experiment and to be honest it's only something I've been doing a lot more of since we started kicking the creatives back in you know well very beginning of 2018 and basically that's only because I've had to but I'm so glad I have because it's so easy to stick to what you know because you want to master one technique 
And whilst there's nothing wrong with that, by never experimenting with new techniques and mediums, not only could you be missing out on a whole lot of fun, but you might even be denying yourself the opportunity to evolve as an artist. And I'm not talking about changing your style here, because I'm certainly not interested in doing that. But we're talking about ways to play alongside it and to have a bit of fun, discover a part of yourself that perhaps you didn't even no existed like I have I mean you know don't you Tara I always said I accidentally became a painter because I tried to be a sketcher <laughs> when I was too yeah. I was too um what's the word you put off sketching didn't you almost I was too you know when you're careful and and I ended precious. up yeah precious and I ended up turning into a still life painter who paints in a quite a realistic style and um you know and I don't and I don't regret that at all because I, I and I don't want to change my painting style but I always wanted the fun of just sitting there and sketching fast you know quite quickly and just you know having a a little reminder of my day and if it wasn't for what we've been doing I think I still wouldn't be doing that I'd still be drawing around a corner behind a wall and taking ages and feeling like I couldn't go with someone because I'm too slow but I I don't feel like that now and it's because I've been almost forced to experiment and um, now I, I totally get why it's so important to do that. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's probably quite weird because in a way I would like to have a painting style, except I don't like painting much. <laughs> um, and that's probably, I'm probably experimental. I think I'm definitely more of a, a sketcher as in, as in I'm much better at sketching than I am when I try and paint things neatly. Yeah. Almost, I'm much better at doing things quickly than I am to try and do do things, and I could I would never have the patience to do things like you do. But I think there are definitely degrees of breaking out of your comfort zone. So, so personally, I wouldn't want to use oil paints. No, whatever. How, I'd I'd experiment with acrylics, but not oil paints because that's a definite. I don't want to. It's too slow for me. Yeah. But if you normally paint or draw realistically, you don't suddenly have to sort of throw a paint around. You could just change it up a little bit. Maybe try changing your subject matter or experiment with one, using one color or a very limited palette. Or you could use a palette knife rather than a fine brush. And like you say, you don't have to completely abandon your style. It's just about stretching yourself and discovering new things. Yeah, I mean, I really don't sort of think, oh, I'm going to experiment with my painting. With me, it's more experimenting alongside it because I really enjoy painting and I'm happy with the style I've developed. But I think by experimenting alongside it even, sometimes I think you can get so absorbed in your own what you know you can do that you forget to try new things and that can be what makes it really fun you know rather than serious business and I think that's so important in in art I mean you were even saying that when we go to London next time you're gonna try colour (laughs) well I I you definitely wouldn't have done that yeah no I mean obviously when I paint I'm I'm you know my paintings are very very colourful but my sketches I've always been just using like a pen or a biro or whatever but it's funny isn't it because (laughs) When I came, when I got to London, I said to you, didn't I? You'll never guess what I've done. You'll be so proud of me. And I opened my sketchbook, and inside there was like three or four different pages where I'd collaged, <laughs> collaged over the pages. I said, I'm going to draw on these. Anyway, when I tried to draw over them, I realised that they didn't blend. The ink didn't blend on on them. So actually, they're the only three three um, pages I didn't draw on. <laughs> but the oh, thought was there. They they do work quite well if you just have a small element of it. Yeah. We've actually got um, a video about doing this, haven't we, in Art Kick Sunday. Yeah. But if you only use small elements of paper like that, yeah. uh, it's okay because I think then you get quite a nice mix of, okay, brush pens, watercolour brush pens won't blend on that bit, but they will blend on this bit and it's quite a nice sort of contrast. Yeah, it didn't work for me because I, was, I wanted to use my ink yeah. as a wash, but um, I've used it at home the collage and it works really well for if you're going over with just like a brush pen or something like that but not so yeah. much if you want to you know not for the water ones no. no but if you never went to art school one of the first things they'll get you to do is experiment with simple mark making and I remember having to do this myself and I thought god this is going to be so boring <laughs> but what you do is you you divide a bit of paper 
into small squares and then you have to use one tool and use it to make as many different marks as you could possibly make. And I'll tell you what, it's amazing how many different marks and actual textural effects you can get, you know, just by changing how you use something or by adjusting perhaps the pressure or the angle or the way your wrist moves. Um, I mean, we re recently made a YouTube video, actually, didn't we, for our Art Kick Sunday, demonstrating just how many different marks and textures you can make with just a simple biro pen. And when you use your imagination, you can, you can go on and on. And when you've done that, then you can do the same thing with other materials. So perhaps the first time you'll try a biro pen, maybe the next you'll just use ink. Um, I don't know, or there's all sorts of things. You might use a twig, but it's surprising how versatile some of the simplest tools can actually be. And then, of course, you can you can learn by that and you can use those techniques in later sketches. And that's where it becomes easier to just take one tool out with you because you know you can do a lot with it. Yeah, I mean, I've experimented with things like cotton buds and they're quite good for painting with because it makes you create much more bolder marks than you would and they're non-precise as well yeah and it's really nice for creating faces actually mm. i use cotton buds and ink and also things like i've tried skewers you know that you have kebab with <laughs> <laughs> and then i think i've talked about this before yeah. but that creates a quite a scratchy mark and you can get a real contrast as well you put two of those sort of things together so i think i put together the skewer with a kind of you know those kids sponge brushes have you seen those uh, you get like a sponge on a plastic stick sort of thing. No, I don't think I have. Oh, well, I've, I use those in, in conjunction. But also use things like old credit cards. Have you ever painted with an old credit card? No, but I've seen people online do it instead of a palette knife. Yeah, I, I've done it with acrylics years mm. ago. And you get some really nice effects with that. I mean, you can also try making your own tools. And I remember this is a college exercise as well. I don't know if you have to. Did you have to do this? Uh, I can't remember doing that, no. So you have to like maybe make paint brushes from bits of string and twigs and oh. chop up bits of card to kind of make brush type you know ends to them. And again, all this thing is trying to do is to get you to create interesting textures and marks and break away from you know that tight little sketch you might be doing. Mm, yeah, I remember having to do things like that. I remember doing a watercolor when I was doing my college course and. Uh, I was trying to figure out how to get the texture of a tree trunk and I ended up using my fingernails just to scratch out, you know, marks and it, it was so effective and that's not something I could have done with a brush, even the end of a brush, you know, the wrong end of a brush because it wasn't scratchy enough. But It's not something I could do because I haven't got any fingernails. <laughs> but, but that's a, um, yeah, that sort of taught me, wow, you know, you can use all sorts of things. You don't have to just use art materials to create art. You can really sort of use your imagination. But I know how much you love to experiment, Tara. So have you ever tried painting with any of your body parts? I can't say I have. Maybe fingers in the past. <laughs> what have you been doing? Splatting your boobs on a <laughs> bit of paper or something? <laughs> Splatting my boobs <laughs> yeah. with paint or something. Something weird, no you. No, no. But one of our challenges was actually finger painting, wasn't it? I think we somebody asked us to do that. I can't remember who it was now, but somebody said, I, I really like to do finger painting and and we, we did a, one of our um like quick kicks challenges, didn't we? I can't remember what month it was, but it, we decided let's do a finger yeah. painting challenge and everyone was having a lot of fun. And it was really amazing just how good that some of the work was and how many marks you can make, you know, with, with your fingers. It doesn't even have to look like finger marks, but of course you don't have to stick with your fingers. You can you know, experiment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember years ago there was um, some adverts and it was it was something to do with the rugby and the British rugby team. And what they did was they got the rugby players to kind of get covered in paint and then they had to run at a bit of paper yeah. and kind of hit the bit of paper. And the images were incredible. No doubt they adapted them a little mm. bit. But absolutely amazing because you just got that amazing sense of movement you know, like the guys were actually really, well, they were really running. Mm. They were kind of running into this paper. And it's very much like the, the show, isn't it? What's that show we watched that we both love? Portrait. Um, the art one. Artist of the Year. No, the other one. Landscape Artist of the Year. 
No, oh, BBC you know, painting challenge. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Well, they do loads of real experimental stuff, don't they? Like paint with brooms and all sorts. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, it's really good. Um, it's funny what you were saying about the rugby team because I remember watching, and this is what I thought you were going to say, Portrait Artists oh, right. Portrait Artists of the Year a few years ago. The winner um, had to paint, oh, gosh, I'm not into boxing, so I don't know who he was, but it was a boxer. And um, right. and this boxer, uh, part, you know, partly they just have to do a few warm-up things. And then he actually got this boxer to dip his boxing gloves in paint and, right. and just box the, like, this massive bit of paper. And there was all sort of paint flying around. And, yeah, so that was funny. I don't, Did he paint over the top of it then? I can't remember. It's quite a long, long oh, time That sounds ago. like a really nice idea. You know, to actually have the person's yeah. fist prints in it. The winner was Christian Hook. I know that much. I saw this really funny thing. It's totally unrelated. Well, it's all sort of related, but nothing to do with art. But in New York, an agency, like a creative agency, had gone round and put up these punch bags all around the city. And it was just like, take, you know, if you're in a bad mood, oh. like whereas with, with paint, you could go up to these things that says, use at your own risk and punch these yellow punch bags. <laughs> which I thought was really clever. It's not a bad idea, actually. No. <laughs> Do you know what I saw once? And I can't for the life of me remember whether this was actually a serious thing or whether it was on, like on a, a sitcom or something. But I've got a feeling... It, anyone who remembers this, please write in and tell me where I saw it. But I'm not even sure if I should say this online, really. But I'm going, oh, go on. <laughs> I want to know now. <laughs> so basically, there was a couple... And like I say, I can't remember if it's a serious art thing or, or what. But I think I know what you're going to say. Do you think you know what I'm going to say? Maybe you'll yeah. be able to tell me where I saw it then. But there was this couple, um, presumably artists, I would have thought. And um, what they would do is they'd lay a huge sheet of paper on the floor. And yeah. then they would both um, take their clothes off. One would paint themselves with one colour. And the other one would cover themselves in another colour paint. So it might be orange and blue or something like that. And then, shall we say, they'd get very friendly <laughs> on the paper. And um, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I do know what you mean. They'd get I very, very friendly on the paper. And then afterwards, what they would do is they'd let the paper dry and then they would sell this um, abstract painting of their um, experience, <laughs> which was basically, yeah... Did they sell for much? A lot. Oh, God, that's worth doing then, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know what Kevin would make of that. <laughs> I think he'd be up for it if they sold you, for a lot. If they sold for yeah. a lot, yeah. I'm not sure about what Paul would make of that. <laughs> I do get him to do some weird things for this art, <laughs> this uh, kicking the creatives lately, these videos we're doing and stuff like that. By the way, anyone who who's just listened to that, I don't mean anything really bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well... It, you know, I've had to ask yeah. him to do all sorts of weird things to me, like, oh, can you tie me tie me to this chair, please? I need to make a video. And he's like, really? <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't know where I saw it. but I, I remember it as well. Do you? So it was obviously on TV something, Somehow, wasn't it? yeah. But, yeah, how weird. I'm not sure about that. But if you're scared to do anything too drastic <laughs> like that i mean i wouldn't want to be doing that but you know try try a usual style but maybe over something like a different um for surface it, it might be collage or it might be you use canvas normally but perhaps you want to try an aluminium panel something like that um with collage it's easy all you need to do, do is stick some interesting bits of paper down so for example i know tara that you've used um torn out pieces of an old annual recently but there's no end of possibilities here and then once you're happy with your design you can then draw straight over the top now i also saw someone once um they painted over their collage with like a dilute um gesso so the elephants, uh, elephants, the elephants, <laughs> the elements are more subtle through the white because um, you can kind of dilute it with a bit of acry acrylic, can't you? And I, I've done it with acrylic paint where I've um, yeah. collaged down well, I, and then just put white. You can put white acrylic as well. Yeah, because I, I've got some gesso and I added a bit of white acrylic and I thought, oh, I'll do that for our sketchbook, my sketchbook in London. But what happened was when I put the gesso over the top, it really did crinkle up badly. So I just tore oh, it out right. and thought, no, it's no good. But 
I don't know. Maybe you I was don't need doing... the gesso. Hmm? You, you can just do it purely with white acrylic. Well, if you want. Yeah, if you do it dilute enough, then I... we don't even need it that dilute. Well, you want if some of the got... elements to show through, though, don't you? Yeah, but you can kind of wipe it. Yeah. So if you put only a tiny bit of water, put it on. If you've got something like Tex, if you just then smear it off with like tissues, they only leave bits of it showing. That works quite well. I wouldn't think tissue would be a good idea because that shouldn't that. Wouldn't they just leave bits of tissue yeah, all over it? Don't worry about it. I don't know why you're worried about it. You put all sorts of things on the collage. <laughs> yeah. Well, not seriously, obviously. <laughs> if anyone wants to know what we're talking about, go back and look at our collage video. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I tried this, like I say, with uh, recently with some of my own drawings. So I just stuck some really brightly coloured torn bits of paper down. I drew over the top with a simple black brush pen and the fact that it was on a coloured background just added a bit of powwow you know compared to the one I'd drawn on the previous page which was just like on plain white paper it really was it was really lovely and actually my daughter came and saw me um and she walked into my studio and she said to me wow I really like that it's really modern that would make a really good you know in fact I think you said it would make a good print didn't you the one with the African yeah, lady really nice. but you know the ones on plain white paper even though some of those are much better drawings they didn't have the same sort of punch I suppose yeah no that's really nice and it was only simple wasn't it I think you only yeah. did you have two colors down yeah just had no yeah. I, I had um three colors but one colour was just a really small piece, so it was just, right. yeah. Um, other things you can experiment with is cutting up bits of magazines and arranging them. You could uh, collage them as a starting point for inspiration and then actually use that as a basis for a drawing, or you can actually use it as the collage in itself. You can cut up the elements and make a little character, and we've done a video on this as well, where I used a wooden wine rack and a fancy kettle to make a little character. Uh, they were basically the starting point, and then you draw based on that. But just to be clear, these were pictures in a magazine of those things, not the yeah, actual... Yeah, a photograph of, of, of yeah. a wooden wine rack mm. and, and a posh kettle, one of those posh yeah. you know, see-through ones. Mm -hmm. um, I've also been meaning to try out a similar technique to try to create an abstract face, and I was thinking, and I might try this for an art kit video, you know, cut up different... Uh, elements from different magazines and then maybe do a sort of composite of those but I haven't tried that yet but I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that one I've also been meaning to try out a similar technique to create abstract faces um, which is to cut up magazines take bits of faces from different places and make some sort of composite of it and then draw it but I haven't got around to that so that might be something I'm going to try in the future yeah yeah and do you remember Tara that program um on, I don't know what, it might have been a BBC programme years ago now, and it was called Changing Rooms. Yes, You know, the I one do. where they go into someone's house and completely destroy it and then call it a <laughs> <Yeah>. makeover. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the presenters was, um, I don't know if you remember, Carol Smiley? Yeah. Now, I think it was Carol, don't quote me on this, I think it was Carol Smiley that um, I saw on another programme that she was on can't remember what it was but what she'd done is she'd spread out sheets of newspaper on the floor and she was drawing sort of big charcoal figures across these sheets of paper and then what she'd do is she'd roughly tear out these figures and then put them like in a frame so you had this torn out bit of newspaper with these charcoal figures on and the drawings were really really good she was obviously really artistic but there was something about the fact that they'd been drawn on this newspaper that just gave them that kind of extra interest and they just wouldn't have looked the same I don't think if they'd just been on plain white paper so I was, that was the first time I'd ever seen something like that being done and I, yeah it sounds really nice it'd be really nice to see those in person wouldn't mm. it because what they used to do in some of those places, sometimes they looked nice from a distance, didn't they? Yeah. Oh. But then you can imagine how bad it was. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they just didn't have enough time, did they, to do anything? No. But like with those newspaper things, what, what made it even better was the fact she hadn't cut them out neatly. She'd yeah. torn them out and then she'd mounted this torn newspaper and then put that within a frame. And it was just so effective. Yeah, I think te tearing that adds such a lovely edge, doesn't it? I remember mm. for graphics years ago, I remember doing things where I'd tear out 
you know try and make a face or something but you do it all out of torn paper yeah so you you couldn't again it's like it's like making your own tools for painting you can't be totally accurate and that kind of adds some sort of niceness to yeah. it yeah yeah but you could also try to work in reverse by adding white to black paper so I've tried drawing a five minute drawing like this which was really fun so I got a black sheet of paper and then used like a white gel pen and just made marks and of course wherever you've got shadows you just leave so you're only drawing the lighter bits and there's also those scratch boards do you remember them scraper boards oh i really hate the idea of using those <laughs> oh when i was a kid i used to absolutely love them um my mum reminded me a while ago that i can't remember how old i was but i must have been really into horses at the time and i put an advert in one of the horsey magazines like a free one that i would do scraper boards of people's horses <laughs> and i think i got i think i got about two orders and I was, it was probably probably for like two pounds or something you know really ridiculous but i remember someone recently in our group they were using those scratch boards but instead of having the white because you used to scratch away didn't you the black mm. and that would reveal white but she was using somewhere you got the kind of rainbow colors coming through yes i remember that yeah yeah, so anything like that, it just it just sort of changes things up a bit. I mean, you do those ones with charcoal, don't you? Yeah, but do you know what? I, I still, it, I cringe, I shudder at the thought of using a, a scraper board. I, I liken it to the kind of feeling of scratching a blackboard. I just, and do you know what? I can't stand the idea of etching either. Don't get me wrong, I, I think they're great, they're brilliant, but I couldn't, I can't do it because I can't, anything that involves scratching just makes me, ugh, no. <laughs> What about cutting, like like say a lino cut? Would that bother you? Mm, I I just no, I, that doesn't inter interest no. me at all. Lino cutting, it really no. doesn't. And yet, some of the stuff I've seen by, by other artists that do it, I love. I think it's amazing, but it just doesn't interest me at all. Um, quickly circling back though to your what you said about the using the the white pen on the black paper. Can I yeah. just say something about that? Because yeah, I remember doing that for the first time. Um, using a white pen on black paper, and well, it wasn't a pen actually. It was um, it was white pastel. Well, years ago, probably going back about ten to twelve years, something like that. And I drew a glass, a wine glass, and then I drew the reflection of the wine glass underneath it. And I thought, wow, this is so effective, just white on the black. And that was the very beginning of my journey into painting gloss which is my main subject oh, now no. so that That's that weird. one experiment that I did lit a, a spark that I loved painting glass and that if I hadn't have done that little experiment I might not have found the fact that I love painting glass so I might not be doing what I do now which I think is so good about experiments because the experiment is not necessarily the end, is it? Oh, it's the just experiment no. is the start. It's the means to an end, isn't it? It's like it's like yeah. a sketch. You know, it doesn't have to be. It's just playing. It's it's playing and and trying things out, and it's surprising where it can take you because I'm pretty much known for my glass paintings. They're usually reflective glass, but had I to say it, that it was that one thing was what led led to it. You know, but going back to scraper board, no, I can't bear, I can't bear the idea of doing that. Doesn't it make you, your teeth go funny? Well, I haven't done it for years, but I used to really quite like the effects that you could get. Mm. And it, it's so interesting having to think the other way around mm. because you're so used yeah. to, you know, putting black or, you know, darker tones yeah. on things yeah. rather than working the other way. So it's quite an interesting way to work. Yeah. And I think it can just... And it's like you said about um, the charcoal. Charcoal is another yeah. great way of doing it because you can... Um, I've done this before. I don't use charcoal anymore because obviously the dust involved in, in an oil painter studio is not great. And I also hate getting quite so messy. I can't bear the powdery stuff. But you, I used to play around with it and it's really effective. So what you do is you'd um, smudge like a willow charcoal across a, a piece of paper and you just sort of smudge it in or wipe it over with a rag. And then um, you kind of draw with a, a rubber or an eraser, <laughs> if you're American, <laughs> um, a, a rubber. So yeah, because a rubber is a condom for them, isn't it? Is it? What, in America? Yeah. No. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. 
Oh, I can think of a whole new... You're not drawing with a condom, are you? I just thought of a whole new video that we could make. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not drawing with a condom. Oh, that's so funny. Do you know, quickly, just I know this is going off, complete off topic again now, but I will come back to this, what I'm saying. You say this like you're saying this secretly and everybody else can hear it. <laughs> Remember, I've got a, a, an Australian friend who you probably know, it was, uh, Tracer, Tracy ah, yes. Fletcher King, yeah. who we've actually had on our show before, and I've know I've we've talked together for years, and um, but she's Australian, and obviously I'm English, and we would chat away and and on our emails and talk about you know her life in Australia and mine in the UK, and I think oh I think I don't know whether I sent her a photograph of my wellies in a massive great big puddle. And she came back to me and said, oh, I really feel sorry for you. Um, she said, I live in my thongs. I live in my thongs over here. <laughs> and I remember thinking, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't expect you to be sharing that much information <laughs> so early on. And it was funny. I just laughed. But I thought she was taking the mitt and saying, yeah, I live in my, my thong. Because uh, thong obviously here is um, basically a pair of very small string-like knickers which are basically good for nothing uh, and uh, I was thinking she was talking about knickers but of course she wasn't she was talking about over um because we call thongs flip-flops over here don't we yeah and they call flip-flops thongs so yeah how, oh, how right. did we get on to oh yeah the rubber I don't That's know <clears throat> learn something new yeah yeah so so what you do is you um you smudge in your charcoal and then with your eraser um you you lift out the lightest areas and then you'll go into the darkest areas with more charcoal and that can be really effective so you could try it with say just a simple i don't know bowl of fruit and what you do is you put you shine a light on it and then you just pick out those very very lightest areas with with your (laughs) i worry about saying rubber now eraser (laughs) eraser (laughs) so you you lift it out and and then yeah you just darken the darkest areas and it's really effective it's a real a really easy way of getting a three-dimensional form do you know i bought some charcoal i bought some from my favorite place the works the old cheapy one I haven't tried it yet. Which which I type did you, you did you buy the because you can get the willow variety which I really like or you can get the compressed which I don't. Um, I think this has got a mixture. I'd right. have to open the drawer and have a look. Yeah. But I know it's got. Um, I think there's a pencil in there, and then I think there's a stick. I can't remember. Um, and also a torsion. A torsion. And I haven't tried any of it yet. Yeah. I, <laughs> somebody was asking me the other day, what's the difference between a torsion, a tortillion, and a paper stump? Honestly. I I don't know. <laughs> one's oh. kind of just compressed paper. One's like a curled bit of paper, and I think one is just another word for the other. I don't know, but oh, not sure. No, no. I, I keep referring to them in our videos. That's all, and I I keep thinking I'm probably using the wrong names, but I haven't looked oh, to look what it's called. But never mind. Yeah, yeah. But one other thing is, do you know what new art materials are out there? Because it never ceases to amaze me how many new different products are coming out. And not that I'm saying you should go out and buy each one, no. but if you're feeling a bit stuck and a bit bored and you want to try something new, actually go and have a look what you can get now. Because, I mean, I really like those, which you'd hate again, Sandra, <laughs> those water-soluble wax pastels. And, and they're... Hang on, like hang on, water-soluble what? wax? Yeah. How can wax yeah. be water-soluble? I don't know, but it is. Really? Yeah. So you can also get water-soluble oil pastels, because I've got some. Yeah, I know you can get water-soluble oils. But you can also get the Neo Colours, you know the Neo Colour 2 that I have? They're water-soluble wax pastels. So they look just like kids' wax crayons, and they use them like that. They're a little bit softer, but you use them. But then if you want to, you can add water to them and they give like a really kind of punchy watercolory effect really nice but uh, they're quite broad again a bit like oil pastels so i hated oil probably, pastels oh couldn't you don't want to do anything too detailed although if you want to you can actually with the water soluble wax pastels you can actually pick up a little bit on a brush if you wanted to so go you know to put your detail in you know wet it a little bit yeah just do a tiny bit that way but in a group i hear people talk about all sorts of materials that I've never heard of, and I have to ask what they are. I mean, at the moment, I quite fancy having to go with kids' gouache markers. Gouache? Oh, we're, yeah. 
Squash. Gouache. Uh, yeah. No, I've never heard of those. I think they say I think they're more of a kiddie thing, but I thought they think they look quite good fun. And then I quite fancy having a go with woodless watercolour pencils. Did you know you could get those? No, I didn't. And also intense blocks. I quite fancy having a go. Yeah, at I've those. got the in- intense um pencils. Yeah, I have as well. Yeah. No, it is. But, it's it's and that's I think where being part of a group is is a good thing because um you kind of see things like this that you wouldn't normally have heard of and you can kind of yeah, you can experiment. It's really good. It's, and it makes such a difference, doesn't it, to your work if you yeah. try using a different thing. Like with the pastels, you know, it, it makes forces you to work broader. Yes, which I would hate. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know because if you experiment, maybe you would like it. Well, you're right because it is so easy to get comfortable with one thing and stick to that. But sometimes it, it really is good to persevere with something, even if you don't like it at first. Because, I mean, I remember that Pentel brush pen um, I had and you had one. Um, yeah. But I didn't get on with mine at all. I, I just abandoned it for ages. It was sitting there, this beautiful pen, but I just hated using it. But then a little while back, I think it was... I think it might have been when we went out sketching the first time, wasn't it? Did I pick it up again? And then I still didn't like it. Okay, that's right, because I was using yeah. it to draw the yeah. some of the statues in a couple of minutes, uh, like two-minute drawings in the museum. I remember that. And yeah, I, I still didn't like it. I thought, no, I just really don't like it. But I don't know, but for some reason, I when I got back from that trip, I, I sort of thought, well... You know, maybe I'll use it not for a two-minute time drawing, but try it for something a bit more, um, I don't know, composed or thought about, I suppose. And I tried it again. And after a while, I just got used to the feel of it. And and I actually started really liking how I could, you know, make the lines sort of thick and thin and tiny and and wispy. and, And now I use it a lot in my sketchbook. So it just goes to show that some things can really grow on you and it can just be a matter of adapting to how they work rather than you trying to control your medium. Sometimes you need to allow your medium to control you and that's something I've done with the brush pen and it's something now that I would not want to be without. Oh, that's amazing. I I didn't like it at first either though. No, it's funny, isn't it? And I think it depends what you draw with it. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a definite, um, a good point, actually. So if you try and draw something, and I think Claire in our group had this, Claire Dunphy, if you try, first of all, drawing something really small and detailed, you're probably going to have a nightmare. Mm. But if you draw something much more broad and larger to start with, it's a lot easier. Yeah, definitely. And I think when you try one experiment, like you did with your white pastel, and that led to your glass painting, you can find it leads to another. So I started using a fine line pen and a water brush for a five minute march. So, and I sort of really loved it and the effects you could get by, you know, the water soluble thing going all grey with the water. Mm. And then I started using it for abstract faces and using it for drawing outside and sketching. And I really love that technique now. And you, you quite like that now as well, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I do. And then also, when I was at college, we drew distorted reflections of faces. And I've taken that a step further and, and started messing about with an app where you could distort your face. And we made a video of this as well, didn't yeah. we? How you could create sort of caricatures of your faces. But it's only then, after doing that first experiment to make our video, that I suddenly thought, oh, there's lots of other things you could do with this. And I started creating those very, you know, those orangey abstract faces I was doing. The basis of them started with me messing about with distorted faces. And then I would just completely change the colours and exaggerate them more. But it all started from that one little thing. And really, it started from that idea at college, then progressed to the distorted app. Yeah, it is. A, people sort of say that saying it's a journey is a cliche, but it it is, isn't it? Because yeah. it's surprising you just take one little turning down one avenue and then it takes you to a whole different place. Yeah. And that's why it's important not to be scared and not just to keep on the same route. But um, you could have a go at combining different materials and then using them together. And I've seen this before on gallery walls. And I just, I, I have to say, I feel a hypocrite saying this because I've, I never do this myself. But that's not to say I don't love it when I see, um, you know, other people doing it. I mean, obviously, there are certain combinations that wouldn't be a good idea, such as um, using acrylics over oils, for instance. But, but I've seen things like where people perhaps use soft pastels over watercolour and that works really well together or um, I don't know there's all sorts of things you can do but 
you know, just see how different things interact. I mean, I keep seeing charcoal and watercolour together and thinking how much I really like the look of it. And I've always thought, well, how do you do that? Because I've seen people do it and I always assume that you'd put the watercolour down first, obviously, because yeah. I think water on charcoal would smudge. Yeah. But actually, some of them do it the other way around. Really? And they just embrace the fact that... That it smudges. Some of it is... Yeah, some of it's going to go a bit smudgy. Mm. So that is something I'd really like to try. Um you might and you might like the soft pastels in the same way because that's colour and I know you love colour. Yeah, I have tried... You mean the chalk pastels? Yeah. Those, those ones. I have tried those in the past. Um, years ago, there's, my mum's got a picture on her wall, actually, I did of my brother when he was little in pastels mm-hmm. and I, I did quite like them. But you've got... Always with medium like that, I don't like that they're so impermanent, aren't they? Yeah, I did a, a drawing of my dog, my yeah. dog we no longer have, Um and that was in soft pastels and it's such a shame because I I don't trust their longevity I think they're great for experimenting or for something you are literally going to put straight behind glass but if you're not I I kept this um drawing in like a in a like a sleeve in a plastic sleeve and I'd fixed it but even though it's been kept really carefully it's faded so badly it's not even smudged it's just faded and so, yeah, I, I don't bother with um, soft pastels for that reason. Yeah, because my mum's got this one and it's the one of my brother is behind glass. So I guess that's preserved. Yeah. And to be honest, it has preserved really, really yeah. well. But like you say, unless you're going to put it behind glass or you've got a really good way of protecting it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? But, but again, for experiments, I don't suppose it matters. It, it doesn't. That's the point, isn't it? It's the it? process. Yeah. It, it's just, I mean, I, I, do I still have that... Um, soft pastel white pastel on black paper glass drawing i did no i'm sure if i have it's probably somewhere bunged up in a loft in a folder and I, it's from college days you know what i mean but yeah um no I, it's it was just an experiment it doesn't matter if that's i don't care whether i've got it or not do you know what i mean so yeah it, it got you to where to where you wanted to be almost yeah. didn't it yeah and there was also there's other interesting things like carrie brummer who you will have heard on our previous podcast she combines embroidery and painting, and I thought that's a really interesting combination yeah. that I would never have thought no. of personally. I would have not have the patience myself, but if you like sewing and stuff, what a lovely way to do. And I remember someone once sent to me, um, it's one I used to blog about graphics, and she sent me these examples of these illustrations she'd created, but she'd done it purely on a sewing machine with stitching, so all the line work was stitches. Yeah. And I thought, how clever is that? Yeah. But they all really kind of simplified what she was doing. Very, very different to Carrie's that are quite detailed work. Well, I I went into a gallery once in Tunbridge Wells, and there was a I don't know. She was an artist slash seamstress because she had all these canvases on the wall, and they looked like paintings originally. But when you sort of got up close, they were actually made of bit, different bits of material that had been sort of stitched onto the canvas. And it was like things like cups and saucers, and they were really quirky, like egg cups and. I really, really liked them, but they were there was no painting involved at all. It was literally just stitching and material, but it was because it was on a canvas, it kind of made it into this quirky painting. Nice. I remember, was it last year? Um, Landscape of Artist of the Year. I mean, I don't know if... Um, I know a lot of our listeners are from America, aren't they? So I don't know if they'd, they'd, they'd be able to see it, but there was a lady there who was painting the landscape with a typewriter. Did you see that? No. So what she would do is she would just, all these people just painting away and she's like, you know that real clicking noise of a typewriter? Yeah. But she was using an old-fashioned typewriter, one where you have to kind of, you know, hit, bang, it. bang the yeah. keys down and then the thing would flick up, like an Agatha Christie movie, you yeah. know, and it would print the, you know, the um, the letter onto the paper. So, yeah, she she was doing that and you could hear her clicking and clattering away in the background, but she was creating this landscape out of letters, just letters. Wow. And, yeah, and she'd go over some bits, obviously, again, and she'd keep, you know, you have, like, this wheel that you pull forward and backwards. They're the real yeah. old-fashioned, like a rolling pin at the back. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I've never typed in my life on, a, on one of those, so I don't know what it's called, but she'd sort of keep going down and back and and over the same bit a couple of times to make darker shadows and different letters would create different marks. And it was so clever, really clever. And what she did was, it was so good. But when you actually got up close, it was just a bunch of letters. 
really funny. How odd. Yeah, yeah. So another good way of getting ideas and inspiration is to join a group. And I'm sure all of our own group members will agree that they pick up a different idea and technique, you know, every day from, from everyone else. So sometimes, you know, it, when you see other people doing things, you see things that you might think, oh, I might try that, which you might not have otherwise ever thought of doing. So that's another good thing to do. And also, you know, it doesn't have to be like like we were talking about earlier doesn't have to be an online group it could be i mean you and i i think when when we went out to london the other day i mean you were sort of saying oh why don't you add a bit of blue there and or do you know what i mean it's just throwing around ideas isn't it you wouldn't and, do it though would you no i didn't <laughs> <laughs> although no there was one sketch where i said i really want to introduce a little bit of feel of a background i'm not quite sure and he went well, why don't you just draw a bit of um uh a lot. Leaves. Yeah. No, was it leaves? I can't remember. But it did. It worked oh. really well. And I think we were both throwing around ideas, weren't we? And sort of, and you know, that's another thing. It's, it's somebody else might give you ideas that you wouldn't normally try. So, and also, what's really weird when you're like that is you can see what's wrong with with a drawing. Mm-hmm. So, for example, I did a drawing that wasn't very good when we were at the last place having our drink, weren't we? So I did one in the cafe, and I know it didn't look good. But I probably didn't know quite why it didn't look good. And you just said, you've you've put too much grey everywhere. You, are, I, I basically hadn't left enough lights, yeah, had I? Yeah, yeah. But even though I didn't, I knew I didn't like it, you can't necessarily see straight away why yourself. Yeah. Whereas someone else can. Yeah. And it's fun. It's interesting, though, because I did a, a sketch at the same place and I didn't add enough shading. No, we, yeah. <laughs> so we did, gone we did completely, completely the opposite. opposite. But we, I mean... At the end of the day, we'd both had a couple of drinks by then, so... Well, no, I'd only had one, actually. Oh, well, I'd, I'd had, had two. two. <laughs> <laughs> so that probably... I reckon we can forgive ourselves for that. <laughs> I think I draw faster than you, but you drink faster than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, wouldn't, I couldn't drink what you drink. You drink cider, I'd be on the floor after one. Uh, yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah, so you could also start a challenge with a friend or do something new. Uh, you could both take an online course together. Now, we have been thinking about doing this, yes, haven't we? Yes, yeah. Trying it. Yeah. Um, or you could simply set yourself something just to do for fun, you know, both of you. Um, and actually, this is how we started off kicking the creatives as well, isn't it? It all started off from messing about challenging each other. Yeah. We just wanted everyone else to join in the fun, didn't we? <laughs> yeah exactly how it started off or you could join an existing challenge so i mean i know that last year we mentioned line november didn't we and that i think was last year we did that for the first time and we had a couple of people who tried lino cutting for the first time and they absolutely loved it and i think at least two or three of them you know continued doing it long after the challenge had finished and mentioned you know just how surprised they were that they enjoyed it as much as they did so sometimes a challenge can encourage you to try something completely different that you'd never tried before yeah i mean i'd never really done much in the way of abstract but i really enjoyed creating semi-abstract faces for our abstract april challenge Mm. um and i think what happens is when you first start it because it's so alien to what you normally do you get some real flops yeah and you you just it's it's almost like you're poking around not knowing what to do it's quite a weird feeling and then eventually you do something you think okay i kind of like a bit of that i think how i can develop that almost how you've been doing your sketchy style sandra and, and at first you didn't know where to take it and then that's developed a little bit more hasn't yeah. it since then yeah but we- but it definitely it's easier the more you do of something yeah like that. i was just about to say with confidence i think that's the thing it's trying trying anything for the first time is it feels alien the more you do something, the more confident you become with it. And yeah, like in London, I sat down on that Trafalgar Square step and I wasn't worried about, I was just like, I'm just going to do it, you know, because I've been using ink and wash and I was feeling more confident with it. And now I feel, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I'd have sat there thinking, oh, you know, I've got to make it look, I've got to get the shapes right and this right and that right. And you kind of have, but you can be very suggestive in a sketch. and Suggestive? So- <laughs> <laughs> you, do you know what I mean though you can just you, you don't have to whenever yes. you're experimenting the best thing to do is just not be precious about the result just have a go and have a bit of fun with it you know well you made me laugh actually when we were sitting on the Thames and uh, 
you were drawing well not the on the lamp. Thames we'd have drowned no <laughs> near it and you were drawing that lamp weren't you the lamp and post then you were saying, yeah the lamp post and then you were saying oh I, I think I'm going to put the bridge in I don't know how to put the bridge in <laughs> well you know I was going I was going to indicate it how do I indicate it <laughs> again because you're used to detail aren't you yeah yeah. But it looked really good what you did. Yeah. And and you'd got the real sort of punch in the foreground of the black, but but it was that not quite knowing what to do, which I think you you almost always have yeah. when when you start something like that. Yeah. Um you can also set yourself drawing or painting constraints. And now this sounds weird that you would stop yourself doing certain things, but constraints can help you make really interesting pictures. So if you think about like the pointer list do you remember they just yeah. used to paint using purely dots? Mm, my friend, so she does that. She she paints with just dots. Really? Yeah, and some of the dots are big, some of them are small, and some of them are different colours. And yeah, and, and it's amazing actually because up close it is just literally dots. But from us, you know, when you're standing back, it's you know this amazing painting. Yeah, yeah, but but it adds something, doesn't yeah. it? It makes something much more interesting. Um, you could create something using entirely diagonal lines, or use only two colours, and you could use weird colours as well, weird combinations. Or one colour. Um, yeah, one colour. Anything just to so basically you set, almost set yourself a rule and you stick to that when you're doing the drawing and the painting. Uh, and we we've, we've actually got a video coming up haven't we on constraints where where we show you one thing we've tried and we might do some others just to give yeah, you some ideas yeah well you could try changing your scale for a while and i mean with miniature may we've just um finished haven't we and well we had a lot of people sort of working in miniature and you know if you usually work on a large scale and you try working in miniature it could be really fun or vice versa if you usually work really really small you could try working at a much larger scale and and it's not as easy as it might sound to adapt because I remember when I was asked to paint you know the marbles I painted which were big the great big marbles the whole painting I think was nearly five foot by nearly four foot so it was a big painting but I'm not used to painting at that size I certainly wasn't um but a couple from the US asked me if um I would paint them some marbles. And, of course, I was like, yeah, I, I love painting marbles. And they gave me the size, which I thought was in centimetres. <laughs> but it turned out that the size they were giving me was in inches. I said, did you say inches? You do mean centimetres, don't you? No, I mean inches. I thought, wow, I have never painted that big before. I've painted fairly large, but not that big. And you, you kind of think you can do the same style painting, but just on a bigger canvas. But that's not how it works. You kind of have to adapt your brush strokes and even your brushes. You have to adapt a lot to do it. And, and it actually wasn't easy, but I was so pleased when I'd done it because it showed me that I could. And, and I probably wouldn't have painted something as large as that um, had I not have been in that situation. Yeah, I know someone in our group, they were doing the uh, miniature challenge yeah and they were trying watercolors but they were saying they were having so much trouble because they're not used to that little restrictive area yeah, yeah. for playing with so it doesn't always work but it's definitely worth testing something out just to see what it does mm. and how it changes how you do things and working in miniature i mean there's a lady i think we mentioned her actually on our last joint podcast didn't we who were doing the miniature made challenge and she's been doing uh, i think she did like a needle and thread you know, the, and then she did people on a train and she did all these... Oh, it's fantastic. You yeah. know who we're talking about. I can't remember yeah. the name, but... but um, and, she, you know, she, she actually posted a couple of days ago um, just the whole collection together. And I thought, wow, you know, there you go. You've got 30, 31 paintings in 31 days. And they were, they were only five, I think five by five, but they were all so good. And do you know what? That would almost be lovely to put in one frame with just an inch yeah. b- between them all. Um you know, and, and actually just have, have like, make them almost into one work of art, but with all sorts of paintings within it. And I think the advantage as well, if, if doing something miniature or even relatively small, is if you're used to painting big, you can get a lot more done. So you can probably finish a painting in a sitting. Yeah. You know, maybe not if you're going for highly, you know, high realism. No. But you could probably finish one of those in, a, in you know, an hour or two. Yeah depending you know, on the pace you're working and the medium you're working in. Yeah. Um, but you could also just change the size of the brush you use and a larger brush will force you to be looser. 
I've been watching some videos on Skillshare by a guy called Robert Joyner. He's um, also got the um, Instagram name of Paint Hog. And he just creates the most beautiful um, loose watercolours. And it, he makes it look completely effortless. And I would completely love to be able to paint like that. He does acrylics as well. But there's just something about seeing those really loose watercolours that I don't think you see quite as often. Yeah. So, so nice. But he was showing the brushes he uses. And and he uses much larger brush than you would probably anticipate. Yeah. For, diff for different things. I guess just to stop him being too detailed. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And another thing, if, if you normally paint from photographs, try painting from life. And, you know, I can tell you that is a completely different skill. I tend to work from both. It depends what I'm painting. So, for example, if I, when I painted my raw egg, then obviously, you know, I had to paint that from a photo because it was progressively running <laughs> along, my, along my desk. But um, so I took, took a photograph and I painted from the photograph. But when I paint things like my um, rum and lime painting that I painted or my cup and saucer that I painted with the lipstick mark, you know, I'll, I'll paint those from life, mainly from life, not completely from life, but mainly from life. And um, it's surprising how different it is. And I do think it's really important not to rely too heavily on photographs because, you know, they can distort perspective. They can only capture so much information. But, you know, on the other hand, they can actually capture too much. And I remember doing a workshop with someone a few years ago and somebody in the group was drawing a portrait and they were, they were painting the most amazing detail in the iris. And it was it was amazing but it looked a bit weird when you stood back. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And she said the same. And he said, well, the thing is, he said, what you're seeing is you're looking at this photograph in such detail and you're painting every single thing you can see in that iris. He said, but if you, that person was standing that distance away from you, would you see all that detail with your eyes? And he said, you wouldn't. You wouldn't see all that detail. So you've almost done too much. But yeah, it's very important, I think, to paint from life sometimes too. I think as well, when you hate from life, like I was saying to you, wasn't I, in London, I was trying to draw that building that was across from us on yeah, the Thames, yeah. um, the Parliament building. And I was only trying to draw a section of it, but I, I basically went completely wrong. I started drawing it and I intended it to be quite small on the page, but I'd drawn it completely the wrong scale because when you're sitting there, it's not like, because when you take a photograph, you've got your composition sorted out. Yeah. You can see how much of it it fills the page. You can see where each bit comes to. Yeah. Of course, unless I'm sitting there holding like a little viewfinder, because obviously you can make yourself a little viewfinder, it's much, much harder. And I, I, I really need to work on that. But it, it makes so much difference because you have to think how you're going to frame things. and Yeah. Uh, and there's so, so much more thought there. And the same applies to, to sketching. I mean, you know, obviously I sketch a lot as well obviously for kicking the creators but sometimes that is from well a lot of the time it's from photographs because you know we're just pra you do have to practice and and i'll tell you what photographs are fantastic for that purpose for practicing but there is it's very different thing going out and sitting on a step in trafalgar square and actually drawing people who move it really is and you have to kind of adapt to the situation i remember i was drawing a person that was kind of looking over the wall when i very first started drawing them they'd face I can't remember the front or the back. They were facing me or the other way around. But then sort of halfway halfway through the sketch, they turned around and faced the other way. But I had to kind of quickly adapt that and make it work. And, you know, that's 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 the beauty of kind of almost you get more movement, I think, as well, when you're kind of having to change things around and I don't know. But it is very, very different. And I think those sketching days have proved to be so valuable for that purpose, just getting on with it and doing it. Whereas photographs, you know no one's going to move, so you don't have that sense of urgency and therefore sometimes you don't have that sense of movement either. No, I, I was looking at some of my drawings and uh, there was one, do you remember there was the couple sitting on the bit of water in Trafalgar Square? The wall. They were sitting on the wall, you got yeah. Yeah, you've got to think about people sitting on water today. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, they, so they were sitting on the wall and um, I looked at it when I got home and I thought, 
Oh, he hasn't got an arm coming out of his sleeve. It's like he's, I've drawn his sleeve in, how he's sitting there, and she hasn't really got an arm coming out of her sleeve. But you think, it actually doesn't matter. Because you look at it as a whole, yeah, it's, it it's, doesn't matter. It's armless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an armless mistake. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but, um, but, but but what I mean is you can leave things out like that and your mind fills it in. Yes. Um, you're just trying to capture kind of how they're leaning. Uh, I don't know how you, It's the gesture, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, none of mine have got faces, as you pointed out. No. <laughs> none of mine have got faces. <laughs> but I was more... more I was more worried. I, I wanted to kind of capture the body language and the movement. But, yeah, having to put the f- faces in, you know, I didn't sort of bother with anything like that. But I think next time I'm going to try and do a few more little indications. And I mean just indications of faces rather than, you know, I don't want to start doing portraits because I want, I'm trying to get yeah. away from that. I'm trying to get... I'm trying to loosen up my sketching. and um, But it doesn't actually matter because your, your mind fills it in anyway. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to you, all you need for an, the eyes, really, is you could just put a line in, yeah. and that, that's it. Yeah, or even just I'd shadow. Really like to, I'd really like to try some um, semi-cartoony style ones when we, when we go out next, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of sketching outdoors, the first step could be just going into your own garden and then venture further. Drawing outside really changes things. Unlike a photo, you really have to think about your composition, like we said before. So, you know, I've been just in the garden and sketched a plant or something you don't even have to sketch anything that's moving or, or sketch someone you know or your pet yeah yeah I mean it's it can be scary at first going out and thinking someone's going to look over your shoulder that's everyone's fear isn't it but funny enough you do get used to it in the end when we were sitting outside on the steps of Trafalgar Square a few people kept kind of looking and one one bloke even took a photograph of us did you see that yeah I did I've deliberately put my hand over my sketch <laughs> no but you know you kind of get used to it in the end and the more confident you get with your drawing you don't care anyway but it's just that because I used to be terrified of sketching outdoors but I'm not so much now I'm still aware when people are around but I'm I think well I'm never going to see them again so it doesn't actually matter um but yeah I think you're right start somewhere where you there's not many people around maybe yeah where you feel comfortable yeah yeah and you can try sketching things um perhaps different to what you would normally so for instance I paint still life that's what I paint and I love painting still life and and I'm not I've no plans to change that but it's interesting that very rarely do I draw it um the only time I'll ever draw out a still life is if I'm roughly working out a plan you know a composition for a painting but in my sketchbook it's almost all figures and I suppose partly it's because I want to make sure I don't neglect those skills. Um, but also I think it just keeps things interesting, you know, to, to do something a bit different. Yeah, I mean, I really don't like still life. Mm. But I think sometimes drawing or painting something you don't like is quite an interesting thing to do. It's, it's an interesting thing to revisit now and again. Um, I know last year you, you encouraged me, didn't you, to draw do some still life. Yeah little drawings and so when I was on holiday I filled a few sketchbook pages with objects that I found in the holiday house and it was actually far more interesting because I probably wasn't at home and it wasn't the normal stuff I see every day I actually really quite enjoyed it whereas I would have told you no way I don't want to do it um, but you weren't you I'm weren't not... picking up things and arranging them to draw you were no. just finding little corners of the room weren't you a lamp and a few books or something yeah and you were just drawing it as you find it weren't you yeah, but because it was different, I think, that's why I liked it, yeah. probably, because it was different surroundings. Yeah. And like I say, you can just do little things, like I say, in the garden. I suddenly had an urge to draw a pot in the garden, which that is something I wouldn't normally fancy doing. And I think it's because I wanted to try out doing a few watercolours again. Yeah. J- just something to get it started. Yeah. And because I didn't want to do it from a photograph. Mm. And I don't like sketching buildings at all. I really, I still don't. I, I don't. I'm just not interested in them. But that said, you know, I'll, I know that I will do it again the next time we're out sketching because I want to get past that. Um, I want to start enjoying drawing buildings. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, you, you just I do. have to kind of um, fight your way through that beginning. The, the, it's, it's the bad phase, isn't it? Yeah. When you don't know what you're doing. When you're like, oh, I'm not quite phase. sure how to go about this, you know. Um, 
But I think the thing to remember in all of this is just to keep it fun and don't think any of this is about trying to change your style at all. It's not. It's about experimenting. And by experimenting, you know, that can help you improve as an artist. And let's face it, I mean, that's what we all want, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Shall we go on to our previous question that we had last time? Yeah, yeah. Which was, do you ever feel guilty for spending time creating? And if so, what do you feel like you should be doing instead? So, Tara, what's your answer to that question? Or should I bother? You know, I've never prepared anything, don't you, for this? <laughs> um, do you know, the the only time I I don't I wouldn't say I feel guilty creating, but sometimes it becomes a lower priority for me. Mm. And the weird thing is, it becomes a priority after kicking the creatives and the stuff we need to do for that yeah which is quite ironic considering <laughs> it's all about being more creative yeah yeah well it's the same the same obviously for me but you do kind of it's a different love isn't it yeah it is and, and we're being creative in different ways with that aren't we yes definitely I think had we not have been doing this then I would have just been carrying along doing what I did painting a lot not sketching hardly ever so uh, that's why I love it. It's worth every yeah. minute. It's worth every minute of the work involved. But, um, yeah, I do feel guilty. I feel guilty. <clears throat> in fact, that was probably one of the things I felt a lot of the time <laughs> was guilt if I'm in my art room. Oh, I think we're going to do an episode on that. I was just about to start elaborating, but I'm not going yeah. to. We're going to do an episode on, you know, living with, well, trying to overcome the guilt you can sometimes feel when you are a creative you sneak that one in because I didn't know we were doing that. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's a subject I'm really... You didn't even give me a chance to say no. <laughs> well, you can't now because I've, I've publicly announced I know, it. I I noticed. The thing is, though, do you know, I, I feel like it's something I feel quite um, strongly about because I... Obviously. Yeah, because I, I've had it such a lot. I've had that sort of... I've been a guilty creative. I felt the guilt of a creative, even though no one makes me feel that way. It's me that makes me feel that way, no one else. Um, so I think I just really wanted to address it because if, there, if, if ever there was a podcast I wanted to listen to, it would be on that subject, I think. So yeah, it's not a democracy, this podcast, is it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought you'd seen it on the list. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, on to some of the answers we got. So um, so do you ever feel guilty for spending time creating? And if so, what do you feel like you should be doing instead? And Nordle just art? Um, she says, absolutely not. But I permanently feel guilty for not spending enough time or no time at all creating. And that, I think, is the right way round. Yeah. Yeah, but that's like a complete opposite thing, isn't mm. it? Maybe we should cover that yeah. if you'll allow that. Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay, so we've also got Lynn... Lynn Choir Artist, and she says, yes, there are times I do. Usually I feel like I should be spending time with the hubs or working on my business. The working on my business guilt, I usually sometimes counter because I'm trying to create more so I can eventually expand the business with surface design. But with the hubs time, it's been a struggle. I'm trying to hard to restructure my day so creative time is built in and not taking over some other area of my life. And I've got Danny Chen. I feel that the act of me drawing is not economically productive and I feel guilty about that and other times I feel like I should be experiencing life instead of doing bad drawings but I feel better after finishing it but I oh, think that's so sad yeah, Danny yeah well, I think that's where sketching from life is so good because you're drawing and experiencing life at the same time yeah, and I think Danny shouldn't worry about his bad drawings. A bad drawing is just a step towards getting a good one. Exactly, exactly. And we all have those, let's face it, don't we? Yeah, you've got to do a lot of bad ones to get a good one. And also, Yeah, definitely. And also, you know, what you think a bad drawing is, you'll probably find a lot of other people will think it's great. Because we're always our so, worst um, critics, aren't we? Our own worst critics. Oh, definitely, So just yeah. keep at it. Keep at it, Danny. So I've got Jola Kedra Art, and she says, I don't feel guilty. I feel sad that there's not enough time in the day to do everything that I need to do. Uh, I've got Laurie League, cleaning up the house, doing yard work, so many things I should do. That can all wait. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've got Truth in Love 2001. 
I felt like I should be organising at one point, but my mum passed away recently and now I feel guilty doing any crafting. I'm not really sure why. I wonder if that's because you feel guilty for experiencing pleasure at the moment. I, I if, bet it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that will be what it is. And and as a mother myself, I would hate for my children to to be like that when I one day go. <laughs> I want them to be really happy and you know that's I'm sure what your mum would want so I do get what you're feeling like I do get that and I'm sure that must be why but I suppose in that case you have to ask your mum in your mind what she thinks about it and then you surely know what she would say back but I have Rusilla Moodley initially yes but soon realised that being creative brought me into true alignment with body mind and spirit It became my interpretation of chop wood, carry water, and it's helped me to cope with the most mundane of tasks. I've got Deb Ellen. I never feel guilty about it because I know if I don't make time to be creative, I'll become miserable and depressed. I do it to keep myself happy and on an even keel. It's usually the only time I would have wasted looking at social media or doing something like that anyway. Exactly. I've got Mary Flynn, sometimes because I should be cleaning the house. But as soon as I walk into my studio, that guilt goes away. Outside, out of mind, that's what I reckon. <laughs> it says the OCD person. Yeah, I oh know. So I've got Rebecca Reynolds and she says, I feel a bit guilty as perhaps I should be doing housework, but my hubby is very supportive and encourages me. He's a good one. And I've got John Munro. I never feel guilty. It's my passion slash hobby. Time management helps. My beloved watches her soaps, so I write in a separate room. Both happy. I use my mobile phone whilst travelling to jot down ideas for expansion. No, I don't drive and use my mobile. Well, I should hope not. not. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Morwenna Walcock, and she says, Sometimes, and there'll be lots of other things I think I should be doing which actually, when I think about it, are other creative things or exercise, getting out, walking or on my bike. I think it has something to do with my concept of time. And I've got Dorothy Walker. I never feel guilty doing arty things or gardening. My kids are playing poker, creating music, playing instruments, writing poetry or listening to music. No guilty feelings for anyone here. Yeah, I do That's think good. I do think it really helps when the people you live with have, you know, passions of their own. That's for sure. I've got Krista Crescenzo and she says, I never feel guilty once I'm doing it, but I do feel guilty thinking about it sometimes. So then I feel I have to do the things I need to do first, even though creating feels like a need to. Yeah, and that sort of can be a bit of a procrastination thing, can't it? Because I've done that in the past where I feel bad that, oh, I really, I should be doing this. So I think, oh, I'll just get everything I need to do out of the way. So I'll unload the dishwasher and I'll whip the hoover around. And then by the time I get into the art studio, I feel drained. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, you don't want to do it anymore. So I think it's important to get, you know, that stuff you can get in the studio first, get that done, and then you can think about doing everything else. That's the only way, I think that's the only re- way around you can do it, to be honest. And I've also got Mumsy Savo. Never. I'd have to go to Tesco with himself. <laughs> she makes oh, me chuckle. So she uses it as a good excuse then. <gasps> Excellent excuse, yeah. <laughs> I've got Bradley Bergen. Yes. Everything seems to be neglected in my mind. That is why I usually don't create until most everyone is down for the night. Even then, I think I should be doing something more productive. And I've got Miok Art Dis. Yes and no. When I'm creating, I want to create other stuff, such as comics, other pieces, or write. But that creating gets in the way of homework and chores. And I've got Nia Edmonds, and she just says that she feels like she should be doing housework. And Angela Murphy replied to Nia with, do it like me and sweep the room with a glance. (laughs) Perfect. I've got Linda Butler, and she says, I hate to say this as my husband is really supportive, but I do feel guilty sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Same here, same here. And we have a brand new question for you this week, which is, what is the wildest thing you've ever done with your art materials? So what is the wildest thing you've ever done with your art materials? So what is the wildest thing, Sandra? Oh, I got friendly on a bit of paper with Paul the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might come out. No, I, I, I haven't thought about that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I haven't either. So... 
As always, you can tweet us your answers at Kick Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, I highly recommend you do. We'll put the question up there too and also on the Facebook page. And of course, you can also find us on Instagram at Kick in the Creatives. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we'd be so grateful for any reviews if you'd like to leave them um, or even just a little star rating if you don't have much time. And also, you can now subscribe to our weekly YouTube video if you want to learn something creative every Sunday and see Tara and I making complete fools of ourselves at the same time. But that's it for today, and we will see you next time. Yep, see ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. Are you close enough to your mic? I'm practically eating it. (laughs) (laughs) My God, I just saw your tonsils.